So in the last video, we learned about use state. Now, we've been writing class-based components for so long, maybe your brain is just totally developed into class-based components. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to take another look at use state. However, this time we're going to be rewriting a component that we wrote as a class-based component, and we're going to be refactoring it into a function-based component using use state. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the differences as we go. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of refactoring because, well, in your journeys with hooks, you might encounter some old code. Now, I should state that the React team says don't go rewriting all of your code into hooks for no reason. And for the most part, I agree with that. However, as a fan of refactoring and clean code, I happen to like to refactor some of my components. And when you want to do that, in this particular case, doing a toggle component like we have here, it's important to be able to know what sort of things we need to do. Not only that, but you're going to see sort of the benefits here. Notice we have this gist here. Now, I have this code is in the description of this video or the link to this gist as well. You can copy and paste this code any way that you'd like, and you'll see it is 22 lines. We're just going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to head over to my project here. I'm going to create a new file, and this is just going to be toggle.js. Now, this file will be deleted eventually, so uh, don't worry too much about it. And we can just save simply toggle.js. Now, let's head to our app code, and I'm going to import toggle.js import toggle from uh, dot forward slash toggle. And then we can simply use this component anywhere that we choose. This is a temporary thing. It's not going to impact our project too much here. Let's go ahead and head back to our app. You see we have a lovely toggle button. We can click that and you see the word hello. Click back and forth. And just like you would expect it to do, it shows and hides the hello. Now this code is nothing crazy. We have a basic React component that we're exporting as a default class. Now even though this is named refactor, it doesn't really matter. We simply have a state initialized. We have a toggle function that takes the current state and sets it to the reversed version of the the state. So if state is currently set to true, this will set it to false. And then we're simply calling this dot toggle on our click. And then we're using this dot state dot is toggled to show our H2. One of the things I like to do in this example is to actually leave this code in here and I'm going to comment it out. Okay. Next, I'm going to come here and I'm going to import not only react, but I'm also going to comma import use state. Okay. Now we just did use state for the first time in the last video. So this is going to be a good follow up to give you a good idea of what you can do uh, with this use state very, very easily. The next thing we're going to do is a const and we're going to call this toggle is equal to, and it's just going to be a simple arrow function. Uh, and it's going to not return anything right away, but we are going to have a return statement in here. Now, you'll remember down here, we simply had a div with a button and an H2 that said hello. So let's recreate this. We can have a div, we can have a button, and then we can have an H2 that says hello. We also want to do our export default and then toggle like this. We save this, you can see the button sort of auto completes or whatever based on prettier. We come here, we now see a button with nothing in it, a toggle that doesn't work, no biggie. Either way, the previous version of this code was taking up 21 lines of code, I believe. Uh, and this one's currently taking up 12, looks a little bit more concise. Now, next thing we want to do is create our state, we can do const, and then have our set of brackets here. And we can say is toggled, and then comma, and then we can say set toggle. Okay. Again, remember these names aren't, they're important, but they're not required. So it's, it's basically however you want to name them. I tend to take things that are like state and name them as is something and then set something. This is definitely again, like I mentioned before in the last video, a, a standard that you'll see. And we're going to say is equal to use state and use state is going to have a default state of false as in, hey, this toggle is going to be closed by default. Now, instead of having to do the this.state.whatever, 
we simply just can say is toggled ampersand ampersand like this. This is a conditional. If you haven't seen this before, this is basically saying, hey, if this is true, show this component. If it's false, then don't do anything. Okay. So now at this point, we should be able to see just a button, no H2. Let's come to our button here and it decided to auto close it for me. No big deal. We're going to simply just say toggle. Okay. And now with this toggle, we can have an on click. And what we can do is we can say set toggle. So is equal to, and then we can have an arrow function here. And this is going to be set toggle and toggle is going to be the value, which is, is toggled. And it's just going to be the reverse of that like this. Okay. So now in 12 lines of code, we've managed to do what we did in 20 some lines of code down here. And it looks pretty dang nice and concise. Let's go ahead and head to our browser. We see our toggle. We click it. It toggles our hello. And that works very, very well. So this verse this, which of these looks better to you? And what's funny here is even if you look at something like state is equal to is toggled false, this is just setting the default state. This took three lines of code and this took, well, not that long at all. Not even a full line of code, not even half of a full line of code. Uh, it's amazing because again, the conciseness, the shortness of everything isn't exactly the point here because sure, uh, short concise code is great, but it could be that short and concise code is maybe less readable. But in this use case, we have things like set toggle is equal to the opposite of is toggled is toggled. Okay. Then show this. Everything just sort of makes more sense and looks a little bit tidier rather than, okay, let's go find a function. Uh, let's do this, this dot set state, grab the state, the current state, return an object that has is talk like this is just very obtuse compared to that. Not only that, but this dot state dot is toggled is way less readable than just is toggled. Okay. And sure enough, you could destructure and whatever, but that's just more code. So the point isn't necessarily that this is shorter, but the point is, is that it's much easier to read. So I hope this little refactor example got you thinking a little bit about that. Now in the next video, we're going to be showing you how, just how flexible some of this stuff is, because after all, this is really just a function and this is just a value. So we're going to be showing you some interesting use cases in which you might want to pass those around. From there, we're going to dive into custom hooks using use effect, which is one of the most exciting, interesting parts of hooks in general. So you're going to want to uh, really pay attention during that stuff because it's where this series is going to spend most of our time. So keep following along as we dive more into hooks.